So this question is a diagram question, right? So any question that provides some type of visual input, I'm going to call a diagram question. Uh, specifically, we have some geometry going on here. So there aren't any, so typically what I do is I take a look at the, the, uh, the visual provided and just see is there anything that I can figure out without reading, right, any values that I can fill in here. Um, but we only are given um, variables, right? So there's no way for me to tell what any of the angle measurements are here specifically, at least. So I'm going to go ahead and read this and then start filling in information. So the question says, in the figure above, lines L and M are parallel. So that's very valuable to know. That tells me, in fact, without continuing to read, that if the lines are parallel, that means this is also Y degrees. This is also Z degrees um, because of corresponding angles, right? So these angles um, are formed by the same transversal and parallel lines, same thing on this side. So the question tells us that Y is equal to 20. So that means this is 20 here, but so is that angle there. Z is 60, so that means this is 60 here, but so is that there. And if this is, just erase this, if this here is 20 and this is 60, that means that X has to be 100 because the three angles of a triangle must add up to 180. So the question just asks, what is the value of x? Well, we've already found it, right? So that answer must be 100. Again, because if I were just kind of blow up that top triangle, we are told that this is 60. We, are, we can figure out that this is 20 because this angle corresponds to that angle, or those two angles are congruent to each other because they are considered to be corresponding angles. And then once we have, you know, 20 here and 60 there, we automatically know that the missing angle on top must be 100. Again, because the sum of all three angles must add up to 180. So that's the reason why choice B is the best answer here.